Yes, a very good afternoon to all my dear students of 11C Science. I hope you are all fine. Uh, so I am about to start a revision class related with the summer of the beautiful white horse. So hereby I am sharing the screen with you all for your convenience and I hope you all can see the screen. Yes, so is it, uh, it is visible to all of you? Can you all see the screen? It is visible? Okay. Yes, please. Okay, fine. Yes, so, okay. So, I will be just sharing some important information with you all related with this uh, story that is written by William Saravian and it is related with two poor Armenian boys who are actually horse lovers. Okay. And I have given uh, 15 MCQ type questions uh, from this chapter and I do hope that all of you will answer the Google form link I will be sharing later in due course of time. So see it is written class 11 book snapshots the summer of the beautiful white horse notes. So if we uh, let us come to the introduction part at the very beginning and as I told you this story is about two poor Armenian boys one is Morad another one is Aram. We are getting to know about the characters, we are getting to know about the storyline as been narrated by a boy narrator by the name of Aram. And they had both the two brothers, they are cousin brothers as you know Morad and Aram, they are cousin brothers, they had an intense longing for horse riding. They were very much obsessed with riding horses. Okay, But remember one thing, they don't have that power of money to afford to buy a horse. They don't have that much of money. Okay, yes, they are rich, not in terms of uh, rich, I mean, not in terms of money or material prosperity or materialistic prosperity. They are rich in terms of honesty and truthfulness. Okay, remember one thing, Morat steals the white horse of John Byro, not with the intention of selling the horse and to earn some money, but with the only intention of riding the horse that we get to know. Aram is shocked because it is a stolen horse. But remember he went on defending his brother. But ultimately when you take something from someone without informing that person, okay, then ultimately there is one way to define that act that is stealing. So no matter how much, uh, I mean Aram went on defending his brother, that day the, his brother, neither he nor his brother had any uh, evil intentions at the back of their mind. Ultimately, uh, without uh, telling an individual if we take something from him or her, ultimately it is referred as stealing only. Okay. Now, the important thing is that there are some characters that we get to know. Uh, remember these five important characters. Aram actually is a nine-year-old Armenian boy belonging to the Garaglenian tribe. And remember, the Garaglenian tribe people, they are very famous for their truthfulness and honesty for almost 11 centuries. I hope you all know about it. Now, the next important character is Morad. Morad is actually the elder cousin brother of Aram. 13 year old belonging to the same Garaglenian tribe. Uncle Kostrov, it's a character, okay. Now, another important character in this story as you all know about it, a crazy person with a powerful head. And not only with a powerful head, but can you say another important thing, uh, if we don't mention that one, Uncle Kostrov will remain incomplete. What is that particular so thing? He is with a very irritable temper. Okay, and another important thing, that is related, that is in, that is uh, found on his face. What is that? Okay. Wait. Moustache. Yes, yes, moustache. absolutely right. Yes, moustache. Yes, very good. Correct. Yes, you are absolutely right. Irritable temper, short tempered, definitely right. But another important thing is that largest moustache and probably the largest in the San Jacuin Valley in California. Okay. Yes. So now I am moving on to the next one, John Byro. John Byro is actually a farmer, okay, by profession. And obviously, the narrator's mother is also a character. Now, let me come to the point-wise summary of this particular chapter. First of all, we should know that they, both Morad and Aram, they belong to the Armenian tribe, or we can say the Garaglenian tribe. The tribe was very much famous for its truthfulness and honesty since the 11th century. 
Now another important thing is that when the story opens, we find that there was a knocking at the door of Aram. Aram wakes up and found that Morad was near his home with a beautiful white horse. At the very beginning, Aram thought it was a dream, but later it turned out to be reality. And he obviously suspected his brother because it was not possible for any member of the Garaglinian tribe to purchase a horse because purchasing a horse was next to luxury and they live in abject poverty. So it is very difficult for them to attain a luxurious life and purchasing a horse, okay dear students, it is simply out of the box. They can't think about it. So ultimately Aram realized it. He had a very suspicious mind. He got suspicious because of this act of Morat. And finally he thought that yes, it was actually stolen. By whom? By Morat. I mean by Morat. And Morat came to invite whom? Morat came to invite Aram to have a horse riding. But Morat had stolen the horse a uh, uh, few months earlier. And already he perfected riding on the horse. Okay, just a minute. Let me move on. Yeah. Now let me uh, come to the next important point. He asked him to make it quick before everyone in the world wake up or woke up. Aram wore his clothes and jumped out of the window and sat behind Morad on the horse. And remember Morad went on singing and we know that uh, he was not singing at all. He was merrily shouting. Actually it's like uh, an ecstasy. It is like a freedom that they uh, cherished for a long time. And that is the reason they received that freedom the moment that they both of them started riding on the horse. Because it was like a dream come true achievement for all of them. They rode on the old countryside of the area where they lived, that is Walnut Avenue. After some time, Morad asked him to get off as he wanted to ride the horse alone. But see, the most important thing is that after riding for quite some time, then Morad told Aram that yes, now you get off from the horse. I want to ride all alone. Remember when Morad was riding the horse, it was a very smooth ride. But remember when Aram went on riding the horse, there was a collapse, collapsing situation. Why? Because see it is written, uh, when Aram got his chance uh, of a ride, the horse took him to a vineyard and threw him off and ran away. What the horse did? The horse took him to the vineyard and threw him off and ran away. After searching for 30 minutes, Morat finally managed to find the horse and they hid him in a deserted vineyard that had some oats and alfalfa. Alpha. Remember that is the place where Morat used to keep the horses. Morat all, uh, had a ha habit of dealing with the horse properly. Not only that, we find later that Morat uh, very skillfully managed okay his way of talking with um, i mean with uh, john byro and not only that we find that he had a way with the dogs also because when morat and adam went on keeping the horse in the barn or in the stable of john byro they never ever the dogs went on barking that means that morat had a way with the dogs also okay now he knew how to handle every type of animals and also humans. This is something that is very important. This shows this. Uh, this actually shows that he is a special character. Morad is indeed a very special character. And at the very beginning, you might be thinking that he is a negative character, but he is not because we find that he was the one who actually uh, even did a bit of repairing of the broken wings of a bird. That shows that he was very, very kind-hearted, isn't it? Now let me move on. Uh, so uh, every morning for two weeks, they would take the horse for a ride and then hide it again. Okay, it was it became a regular affair for them. But the important thing is that uh, another character in the middle part of the story appeared. His name was John Byro, and he lamented that he had lost his horse and he purchased the horse for $60 that he told and Uncle Kostrov listening to all this uh, as usual went on shouting and went on saying that I spit on money and all these things and there is a patent dialogue of Uncle Kostrov. I guess you all know about it. It's no harm, pay no attention to it. In this case also Uncle Kostrov told in front of the Aram's mother, in front of uh, I mean John Byro, he told exactly this same uh, same patent dialogue. It's no harm, pay no attention to it. How serious, how much serious uh, Uncle Kostov we get to know. His house was on fire as you know. 
his son came to inform him and the same dialogue he told at that time is it possible for any one of us to say the same thing but it is possible for uncle kosrav only because he was totally insane i i think you got my point he was totally insane he was totally crazy now obviously uh, remember one thing if you say something to someone who had lost his hearts okay and that is john byro he got uh, irritated and went out of that place okay later uh, i mean the uh, we find that aram went to morad and aram told everything about the hots to morad okay and he and aram also told in detail that i got to know everything whose hots actually it was now uh, and aram requested after saying all these things as you know if i guess you all have read the text aram requested morad that not to give out the hots right now he wanted to ride it then obviously after that morat can give it back but morat told aram that it would take for him at least a year to to ride on a hots properly so finally they decided that six months they will keep the hots and then it will be returned to the rightful owner john byro and at the very end we find that they came face to face with john byro john byro recognized it was his hots but he haven't created a scene he never behaved in a very exaggerated manner he never behaved in a very aggressive manner simply and very politely john byro reminded both the boys related to their ancient family tradition okay he just simply reminded them okay then you see uh, after that uh, it seems that the two boys they felt guilty from inside it pricked their conscience and the very next morning they returned the horse back to its rightful place that is in the stable of john byro few of the dogs followed them but remember the surprising thing was that much to the surprise of aram okay uh, the, we find that the dogs they haven't barked if, if they would have barked then obviously john byro would have responded okay but they haven't barked and when asked to morad regarding this morad told aram that he had a way with hots uh, with horses he has a way with dogs just like he had a way with the farmers okay finally at the very end what we find john byro once again came to the house of the narrator's mother but unlike the first occasion when he was very unhappy and dissatisfied he looked very sad okay disturbed but this time he was exactly the opposite of whatever i told right now that he was happy he was satisfied he was not looking disturbed he was really very happy because under mysterious circumstances someone had stolen the horse now under that under a similar mysterious circumstances the horse now returned back to john byro okay and remember at the very end we find that whatever happens whether anything good happens whether anything bad happens whether anything shocking or surprising thing happens uncle kostov is always ready with the same thing always he is relaxing and he is totally insane what he told quite man quite your horse has been returned pay no attention to it so you can understand that whatever it might happen uncle kostov will never change will say was saying exactly the same thing as he was roaring earlier time also when john byro got disappointed without his horse he went on lamenting previous time now when john byro came came to the house of the narrator's mother looked exactly opposite to what he was looking previously it seems that uncle kostrov i mean uh, was uh, exactly the same as it he was previously he went on roaring and told quiet man quiet your horse has been returned pay no attention to it okay so that is it that is the main story line don't leave the class let us do some mcqs okay then you all leave the class okay you all will confirm me whether uh, you all can see it or not just a minute it is not visible right now yes but now i guess it is visible can you all see it okay yes sir okay first uh, question who is the narrator of the story the summer of the beautiful white hearts yes dear students Hello. Adam. Yes. Adam. Yes, it is Adam. Very good. Very nice. Correct. Next one. Uh, after the horse was stolen and returned, it became very simple. Both A and C. Uh, rougher and stronger and better tempered. No, it will be only C. Only C. Stronger and better tempered. Yes, very good. Yes, stronger and better tempered. Only C will be the answer. Okay. Next one. When did the boys return the hearts? After the ram 
Yes, number four, correct. Absolutely right. After they ran into John Byro. Very good. Next one. John Byro said, A suspicious man would believe his eyes instead of his heart. What does it tell about him? He believed in the honesty of the Garaglinian family. Very good. He believed in the honesty of the Garaglinian family. Absolutely right. All of you are right. Very good. Next one. At what time? Did Aram and Morad ride the horse? At what time? Early morning. Early morning. Yes, early morning. Yes, early morning hours. Very good. I told you we hours or early morning hours. Correct. Next one. Who was the true? Sorry, it will be owner. John Byron. Okay. Yes. Yes. It is John Byron. True owner of the horse. Yes, it is John, John Byron. Byron. Yes. Okay. Absolutely right. Very good. Next one. Uh, what sort of an understanding did Morad mention with the horse? Let's see. Simple and honest. Yes, very good. Sim yes, simple and honest. Absolutely right. Very good. Next one. Morad had been hiding the hearts. In a barn of a vineyard. Yes. Barn of a vineyard. Yes, very good. In a barn. Uh, in a barn of a vineyard. Yes, absolutely right. I have highlighted also. Question number nine. What was Uncle Koshrov's customary line? It is no it harm, is pay no, no, harm pay no, no harm, pay no attention yes, to it. Yes, absolutely right. It is no harm, pay no attention to it. Absolutely right. Very good. Next one. How would you describe Uncle Koshrov? All of all the above. Yes, all definitely. Above. Definitely. He is honored with the last option. All of the above. Correct. He is hot tempered, irritable, impatient. Definitely all of the above. Next one. No member of the Garaglinian family could be. Great. A thief. Yes, very good. Could be a thief. Very nice. Next one. Where did Aram live? At the yes. 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 Absolutely right. At the age of town on One Lot Avenue, it is mentioned in your NCRT text also. Okay. Thank you so much. You all have done extremely well, and uh, everyone has given today ALS. So the next group. Who are in? I have already uh, given you the Excel sheet. So please join the class for tomorrow. And the rest of the students, as usual, please join the class because another interesting thing I will be discussing, another important topic I will be revising tomorrow. Till then, stay safe and see you all tomorrow. And uh, uh, have a nice day, everyone. Okay, stay safe. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you everyone.